Wonderful. Well, it looks like we have a caller. Mike, you have a question for us this evening? Yeah, hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I, I've always heard of the Anti-Cruelty Society the entire time I've been in Chicago, and now I realize it's because it's been here long before I have been. <laughs> That's right. Um, I wanted to ask, is there any way to know how many animals you've actually helped over all of these years? Tammy, what do you think? Um, I don't know that we have a total number. Um, it's, it's certainly in the hundreds of thousands. Um, I, I do have one statistic here that uh, we've adopted out 57 um, thousand animals just since ni 1999. So um, it certainly just goes in the hundreds of thousands as to how many would have been helped um, over this um, 109 year period. It's a lot of animals. Well, yes. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Thanks for your call, Mike. All right, so um, there are lots of different programs that have been evolving as well as just the building evolving. Um, there was, uh, there's been humane education that's been going on for quite some time. How did that get started and what, Actually, what are some of those programs? Yes, um, humane education was part of the original mission of the Anti-Cruelty Society. So um, that was going on almost from its inception. Um, people went out and did public lectures. Um, they did something called magic lantern shows. That's kind of a primitive form of a projector where oh, they okay. would use still photos and illustrations. Um, and usually they were to promote messages of kindness to animals, um, things like that. Um, they went to the schools and they did these uh, pet shows at the schools. So uh, they were doing these things from the very beginning. Um, but we did hire our first... Um, full-time um, educator in um, 1937. Um, her name was uh, Virginia Sedgwick. And within that first year um, of her um, going out to, to the schools, she visited 127 schools the first year, uh, seeing over 100,000 children. Wow. Uh, um, so that was a great deal of work for just one woman And this to was in what year? Uh, 1937. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah, and uh, obviously this has continued since. Our education efforts just continue to grow and expand. Um, we still go out to schools as well as see many other kinds of groups. Oh, wonderful. Now, there was a director early on, a Dr. Young. Tell us about him. Uh, yes, um, Dr. Young was probably one of the most charismatic directors we had at the Society. And then he made uh, many progressive changes when he came on. Um, he came to us in 1935 um, from the uh, Animal Rescue League in Boston. Um, and he started many new things for us. He did a radio show called Animals in the News um, that lasted for 20 years. He started our first magazine, the Progress Bulletin, um, which is a pre precursor to the one we still have today, which is now called Animal Crackers. Um, and it's been kept up over the years that we've um, had these magazines. Um, he did pet first aid classes for children. Um, the Horses Christmas um, was expanded to dogs and cats under him so that um, needy families could come and get treats and food and things for their um, pet dogs and cats. Um, he um, During the World War II, he served on the um, veterinary committee for Dogs for Defense and would actually take part in selecting dogs that were going to serve in World War II. Uh, nine dogs were sent from the Anti-Cruelty Society about this time. I don't know if that was ever our total, um, but in the records they say that within the first year of that program, we sent nine dogs and about a thousand overall were sent um, from the Chicago area. So um, Dr. Young would have been one of the people that helped select the dogs, make sure they're healthy. And there's even a very dear story about him going out to, by train with the dogs, um, where they were going to be um, trained and then shipped overseas. And he slept on top of the kennels uh, all the way out there to be with the dogs. He sounds like he was really committed. Yes, a very committed, uh, wonderful person. Um, he, during the um, World War II, he also um, was the regional director for um, the Red Star um, Animal Relief um, Auxiliary, and so the Anti-Cruelty Society served as the head of that for the Midwest. Um, and what was that group about? The, that was um, a group that was started actually uh, by American Humane Association in World War I. 
its mm -hmm. purpose was to help the animals that were serving in the war. The horses that were used, the dogs that were sent over. Um, so they did a number of things. They raised money, they recruited volunteers to go over and help with these animals. Um, then, as, particularly in World War II, we also, uh, we trained volunteers at home that would be ready in case um, of attacks in the United States. As you have to remember, in World War II, there were blitzes, and we, we didn't know if that would happen here. So we had a four-week course at the Anti-Cruelty Society where they learned pet first aid, they learned how they would give triage to animals, how they would evacuate animals in blackout situations. Matter of fact, the last week of the four-week course, they would actually black out the windows of the Anti-Cruelty Society mm. and have the people tr uh, practice evacuating the animals. Uh, wow, so even way back then they were doing disaster yes. relief preparedness. And, yes, and actually that is what Red Star has evolved into now, is the uh, um, animal um, relief, uh, disaster relief program. That's wonderful. Yeah. So what plans does Anti-Cruelty Society have for the future? Where do, we, where do we go from here? We have a wonderful history. What's next? Well, um, uh, we're going to continue, obviously, to look for ways to develop uh, new and better programs. Um, we're always looking to partnership with other um, organizations in the community to um, help um, spread the word and to um, um, get our um, services out there um, and hopefully we'll, j we'll just continue to grow um, what we're doing for as long as we're needed. For <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those businesses that uh, it'd be nice to be put out of business, wouldn't it? Yes. Yes, well that's wonderful. All right, well we have um, run out of time this evening, um, but thank you so much for joining us. I uh, want to just remind you, I am Alicia Obando from the Anti-Cruelty Society, and we are here on CAN TV 21. The Anti-Cruelty Society is a 501c3 private nonprofit organization, and we receive no government funds or funds from any national humane organizations. So if you'd like to learn more about the Anti-Cruelty Society and how you can support all the great work that we do, please feel free to check us out on the web. And our website is www dot anti dot org or you can always call us at 312-644-8338. So I want to thank you Tammy for coming and uh, sharing all this wonderful knowledge and your photos with us and I want to thank little Cobra for being just the perfect little pet guest today and please tune in again next Thursday at 530 where we'll be back to talk about challenges that cats face in a shelter setting. Thank you so much.